what's inside your cigarettes and how do these chemicals affect you? Hi, this is Nasya Davos and in this video you will learn what chemicals are in your cigarettes, where else you can find the same chemicals and if filters make cigarettes less harmful. And there are two reasons why you must watch this video. The first reason is that most smokers don't know what they smoke. I didn't know what was in my cigarettes when I smoked and I was shocked when I found out. And the second reason you should watch this video is that it's gonna help you see cigarettes objectively, not as a friend, not as a crutch, but see it for what it is with clear eyes. This video is not about health scares, it's about facts. After all, you wanna smoke it, at least know what's inside. So stay tuned. Before we get into it, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so you can get notified when we release more videos that are gonna help you understand your addiction better and quit it for good. Okay, so what's inside your cigarettes? You already know that cigarettes have a nicotine inside. Now a common question I get asked is, does nicotine cause cancer? And the answer is that we are not sure. Although nicotine is not considered a carcinogen at the moment, studies have found that it can promote the genesis of tumors and can create resistance in some chemotherapy agents. Now, if you want to know how nicotine affects your body and if it's bad for you, check the link I added for you in the description of this video. So listen, there are a lot of things in a cigarette besides nicotine. Your cigarettes have 600 different ingredients. And when you light up and the cigarette is burning, these ingredients combine to form more than 4,000 chemicals. And at least 69 of these chemicals are known to cause cancer. The rest of them are just unhealthy, which is pretty bad. And a lot of ingredients that are in your cigarettes can also be found in consumer products like rat poison and cleaning products. But the thing is that when you buy a rat poison or a window cleaner, they have warning labels with the chemicals that are inside. But there are no details for what's inside your cigarettes, so you don't know unless you search for it. That's why I'm really glad you're here and you're watching this video. Okay, so let me show you what are some of the chemicals that are in your cigarettes and where else you can find the same chemicals. Let's start with benzene. Benzene is found in rubber cement, gasoline, and it is used in making dyes. And benzene is linked to leukemia. You will also find hexavalent chromium. This is used in textile dyes, wood preservation, anti-corrosion products, and colors in paints, inks, and plastics. This is toxic, it is carcinogenic, and when inhaled, it can cause lung cancer and cancer of the nose. You will also find 2-naphthylamine. This is used to make dyes and it is a known carcinogen and it has been replaced by less toxic compounds in making dyes, but it is still in your cigarettes. Another thing you will find in your cigarettes is cadmium. Cadmium is found in battery acid and paintings and it is linked to cancer, cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis. And cigarettes have cadmium inside because the tobacco plant absorbs heavy metals like cadmium from the surrounding soils. So when you smoke it, it enters your body. Smokers have four to five more cadmium in their blood than non-smokers. Now another chemical with a very weird name is 4 amino -bifinale. There are two ways you can come in contact with this chemical. By being around chemical dyes, or by inhaling cigarette smoke. And researchers have shown that this chemical is responsible for bladder cancer in humans and dogs by damaging the DNA. And because of its carcinogenic effects, the commercial production of this chemical stopped in the United States in the 1950s, but it is still in your cigarettes. Now another ingredient you will find is vinyl chloride. This is a gas with a sweet smell. It is highly toxic, it is flammable, and carcinogenic. You will also find ethylene oxide. This is the main component of fuel air explosives. And they put it in tobacco to make the tobacco leaves mature more quickly and kill fungi. Now another chemical you will find in your cigarettes is arsenic. Arsenic is used in rat poison. The United States Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry ranked arsenic as the most harmful substance in 2001. Arsenic is classified as a group A carcinogen. Doesn't get worse than that. 
Now, another thing you will find in your cigarettes is nickel. This is used in batteries, metal surface treatments and pigments. It is carcinogen and it's linked to lung cancer and workers exposed to nickel have shown risk of lung cancer and other lung infections. But there's more. You will also find in your cigarettes polonium-210. Polonium is a radioactive element discovered by Nobel Prize winner Marie Curie and it is known to cause cancer. It is used to power artificial satellites and it is used in initiators of atomic bombs in reaction with our next chemical, beryllium. Beryllium, apart from being used in initiators of atomic bombs in reaction with polonium, I'm saying this again because it is really hard to believe. So beryllium can also be found in coal slag. The International Agency for Research on Cancer lists beryllium and its compounds as category 1 carcinogens. You will also find in your cigarettes formaldehyde. This is a disinfectant and it is also used to preserve dead specimens and it is linked to lung cancer as well. You will also find tar in your cigarettes. You already know that I think tar is carcinogenic. When you inhale tobacco, the tar is the dark color that is being left in the lungs. Tar coats the cilia in your lungs and causes them to stop working. The cilia in your lungs are responsible to keep your lungs clean and healthy. So tar makes them stop working, which causes cancer and other lung diseases. Also, tar harms the mouth, makes your teeth black, your gums black, and destroys our taste buds. But that's not all. There's more. In your cigarettes, you will find acetone, which is found in nail polish remover. And you will find cyanide. Cyanide is a deadly poison used to suicide throughout history. So when a warlord got caught, he dropped cyanide and he died. Cyanide was also used to mass murder in the Holocaust in the gas chambers. This is a deadly poison. In your cigarettes, you will also find acetic acid. This is an ingredient in hair dye. You will find ammonia as well. Ammonia is used is a common household cleaner. We use it to clean windows and the toilet. So how do we, why do they add ammonia in your cigarettes? Because by adding ammonia, your lungs can absorb more nicotine so your brain can get a higher dose of nicotine with each puff. There is more. In your cigarettes, you will also find butin. Butin is a gas used in lighter fluid. You will also find carbon monoxide. This is released in car exhaust fumes and it is a poisonous gas. You will also find lead. Lead is used in batteries and it is poisonous in high doses. You will also find naphthalene. Naphthalene is an ingredient in mothballs. It is used to create black smoke and simulated explosions and it is linked to cancer. Another ingredient that's in your cigarettes is methanol. This is a main component in rocket fuel. You will also find toluene, which is used to manufacture paint. And there is also DDT. DDT is a banned insecticide because it's linked to liver cancer. You will also find methyl isocyanate. This is a gas and its accidental release killed thousands of people in 1984 in the Bhopal gas tragedy in India. And what I just mentioned are only some of the thousands of chemicals that are in your cigarettes. I only told you about a few so you can see how bad they are, but the list goes on and on. So now you may be wondering, what about filters? Do filters make cigarettes healthier? Listen, when cigarettes, when the first came out, they were unfiltered because this allowed all the flavors to come through. But when people started finding out that cigarettes cause cancer, they were worried. So Big Tobacco started putting filters in the cigarettes to prevent some chemicals. This made cigarettes too bitter. So what did they do? They added even more chemicals to remove the bitterness. So filters do not make cigarettes any healthier and they don't remove nearly enough tar and chemicals. This is a ploy, a marketing ploy to keep you smoking. So what about lighter cigarettes? Lighter cigarettes used to be the cigarettes that had less tar or less nicotine. But this was misleading smokers that these cigarettes are healthier, so they had to change their name to low-yield cigarettes. And research shows that the risk for lung cancer in smokers is virtually the same whether you smoke low-yield cigarettes or normal cigarettes. And the thing is that when you smoke a low-yield cigarette, you inhale more deeply to get the same amount of nicotine that you used to get from a regular cigarette, so it's not a low-yield cigarette anymore.
And I want you to think about why these ingredients are not on your pack. The warning labels that are already on your pack that show you what cigarette does to you, they don't work because we always say, this is not going to happen to me. We rationalize and this is a defense mechanism that allows us to keep on smoking because you have cognitive dizziness, you have a conflict in your mind between wanting to smoke because you're addicted and knowing it's harming you. And you cannot live in conflict, no one can, so what are you doing? You rationalize, you say this is not going to happen to me. And that's why these labels don't work. But seeing the ingredients that are in your cigarettes, this takes away the illusion that there's something magical in your cigarettes that helps you cope with life and socialize and relieve stress. There's nothing to it. Every time you have a craving, I want you to think that a bunch of chemists are having a meeting with the big tobacco executives and they try to figure out what chemicals to add in your cigarettes to keep you addicted. I don't know if this sounds far-fetched to you, but listen, 600 ingredients didn't end up in your cigarettes by accident. So there are a lot of chemicals, yes, but the good news is that your body starts recovering immediately after you stop putting these chemicals in it. Our body is a genius machine. 20 minutes after smoking your last cigarette, your blood pressure has returned to normal. In 48 hours, your senses of taste and smell have started to improve. In two weeks, your heart attack risk has started to drop. In 90 days, your lungs are healthier. Listen, every cigarette you don't smoke matters and it's never too late to stop, as long as you do. So if you want to know how to quit smoking naturally in a way that works, if you have failed before or if you don't believe you can quit even though you know the dangers, make sure you get the foundational video of the CBQ method. It's going to help you get started. The CBQ method is a psychology-based method. It involves no drugs, no medications. It has four quit smoking stages that are designed to remove the desire for cigarettes and change how you think about smoking and break the habit. These four stages help you reprogram your brain so you can stop seeing cigarettes as a friend or as a crutch. The CBQ method has helped thousands of people quit smoking for good and it's the same method I talk about in my TED talk. So go watch the foundational video. The link is in the description. In the video you will learn what are the four stages of the CBQ method and how they work together to help you break free. I'm going to show you how you became addicted to smoking and how you can use the exact same process to break free. And you're going to get a great roadmap of your journey that's going to help you if you have already quit, if you're preparing to quit, or even if you think that quitting is too much right now, because it's going to help you break down the quit smoking process into approachable steps. So go watch it and let me know in the comments if you know other chemicals that are in your cigarettes. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who can benefit from it and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.